Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem from the JEE main test deals with Kepler's laws or the conservation of angular momentum, which is essentially the second law of Kepler. So what we're dealing with is a comet here. Let's read the problem. The maximum and minimum distances of a comet from the sun are 1.6 times 10 to the 12 meters and 8 times 10 to the 10 meters respectively. If the speed of the comet at the nearest point is 6 times 10 to the 4 meters per second, the speed at the farthest point is, and it's going to be one of those four answers. Now, we know that when the comet is farther away, it will be moving slower, and all four answers are slower than the speed at which it has when it's closer, so we cannot automatically eliminate any of those answers. So what would be the best way to approach, and of course the title gives it away a little bit, the conservation of angular momentum. We know that L initial must equal L final. And of course the equation of the angular momentum is the moment of inertia times the angular velocity must equal I times omega sub 2. Uh, or final, I should say, final. Of course, what is the moment of inertia? Well, it's going to be, since it's a point mass going around the sun, it's going to be m r squared, and omega can be written as v over r. And so that would be initial, and then here we have m r squared, and of course that will be initial, because the radius is initial, initial uh, times, no, this will be final, of course, final times v final over r final. All right. And now right away we can see, we can simplify this. This r will cancel this r, this r will cancel that r, and so we end up with m r initial v initial is equal to m r final v final. And then of course since we have m on both sides, that cancels out, we don't need to know the mass, which means that velocity final is going to be equal to velocity initial times r initial over r final. So simply, it's going to be this ratio of the radii times initial velocity will equal the final velocity. Now, when we do that, so we get v initial times radius initial would be, uh, where are we? That's, uh, well, when we're close, we're over here. That's initial. So that would be 8 times 10 to the 10th divided by 1.6 times 10 to the 12th. Okay, let's see here. Um, hmm, that would be, if I write it like this, maybe I can see it a little bit better. Sometimes that helps. 8 times 10 to the 10th and 16 times 10 to the 11th. Then 8 divided by 16 is 1 half, and we divide by 10, that would be 1 20th. So this would be equal to 1 20th of the initial velocity. So all we have to do is take the initial velocity, divide by 20, and we get the final velocity. So uh, 6 times 10 to the 4th divided by 20, uh, that would be equal to 3 times 10 to the, whoop, I got one too many zeros here, divided by 10, and that would be equal to 3 times 10 to the 3rd. And so what answer is equal to that? It looks like it's answer C. So this is the answer. The comet will be moving at 3 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second when it's farthest away, as opposed to 6 times 10 to the 4th when it's closest, a ratio of 20 to 1. And again, what's nice here is by using the conservation of angular momentum and simplifying the equation, we simply see that it's a ratio of the radii and the velocities. And that's how we solve this problem.